I'm Anthony Finale with Off the Chain Hog Dogs, and this is the Cur Dog Chronicles. What is going on, everybody? This is Anthony with the Cur Dog Chronicles. Today is a really awesome day. This is uh, the day of the first official interview. Um, I got my man Caden of Caden Films uh, behind the camera, and I can't wait to see how this interview goes. I got my buddy Pete Larson here at Woods Time. How y'all doing? Uh, Pete and I have been friends for a while. Uh, we had a couple of hiccups. We tried to do a couple of interviews before. It didn't work out, but we, uh, what, third time's a charm? Yeah, exactly. So uh, we're here, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna chop it up a little bit. Talk about cur dogs, you know, styles of hunting, genetics. I mean, you name it. Pete runs a YouTube channel. Um, you can, uh, it's uh, Woods Time. But, um, he's been doing it for what, about a couple months now? 10, 11 months. Yeah, but Pete, Pete's been uh, bringing some great content, man, and I'm excited. So him and I have been talking about this, and he's kind of pushed me to really go about this. So again, this is the first Fisher Hill interview, so we'll see how it goes. Main topic of this whole Thing I'm trying to do here is cur dogs. Now, you are a cur dog expert. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we've talked about this, man. People really don't know what cur dogs are, and right. it's kind of sad. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I did a video in uh, one of my uh, on my YouTube channel of kind of the background of cur dogs, and it was just crazy the amount of people that were like, you know, the reviews I got, and you know, they didn't know what cur dogs were, man. I mean, it was insane. But cur dog, it's really, all it really is, is a, it's a mongrel dog, man. It, you know, it's a crossbred dog. Um, there's really no paper trail on what cur dogs were from the beginning until the breeds started getting standardized, correct? Right. Um, breeds, we got blackmouth curs, Catahoula curs, uh, ringneck curs, uh, mountain curs, Florida curs, um, I think that's kind of you got some subset cur groups too, yeah you, you got know? like a blue lacy yeah oh yeah the blue lacy state dog of texas yeah uh, catahoula state dog of louisiana what do you really like in like a cur dog like tell tell people what you think uh, your desired trait for a cur dog is i would say my ideal cur dog is probably a more medium range yep. dog that goes hunts out a couple hundred yards 300 yards and no sign yeah more of a medium nose dog mm -hmm. um you know take a decent track find and stop a hog yeah this we have a special guest here uh this is pete's uh catch dog toby um toby is an american bulldog correct yeah standard dog yeah yeah he um pete's raised him from a puppy and this guy's seen a lot of uh a lot of ears on a hog man he uh he's a catch machine and i have cabela here cabela is a black mouth cur uh cabela is a little bit bigger stockier dog um she had a lot of guys like this frame on these uh, these black mouth curs or just cur dogs in general, you know that block of your head, the, the the bobtail stuff like that. So, but uh, styles, uh, everybody. The one thing I love about this thing, Pete, is that everybody has a different preference, man. Right. This is what makes it awesome. Um, some guys like the the medium range, longer range, you know, um, and especially when it comes to working cows. Some guys like dogs that just go all day. Some right. guys like dogs that. You know or faster dogs you know what i mean right. so it, it all depends everybody's got their own preference but me man i really uh i like a a medium range kind of longer range dog yeah i like kind of the taller lankier dogs yeah i do like a, a dog with some grit you know we when we say grit we're talking about a dog that's going to put teeth on a hog before barking at it um a good sign is when you're hog hunting with a grittier dog you say you know that dog usually catches we'll say what about a 150 pounder we'll say even 200 by yeah. himself right yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you start to hear that dog barking in the distance you you know what does that mean yeah it's gonna be a good one we got a good one on the other end you know so uh there's different styles man uh everybody uh has different ways of training dogs but um it's crazy though that the amount of people that really don't know what a cur dog is um, it's insane but this is why I'm doing this, especially with the cur dog aspect of it, is to bring it to light. You can see these dogs here, they got great temperaments. You know, Toby's a very well-mannered dog. Uh, Pete's put a lot of time and effort into him. And same here, I mean, I put a lot of time into Cabela. And uh, 
it is what it is. Um, one dog down here that we've you and I have talked about a lot is the the Florida Cur. Right. Um, you're big into the Florida Curs. I think you you kind of always had Florida Curs, haven't you? Yeah, it's just kind of what has has, has worked for me. Um, I used to run pit curves, which is basically short range, hot nose, just basically yeah. running catch dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of have changed a little bit just because of who I hunt with, who I hunt with, and the type of property it is. Yeah, I think um, the property has big, big thing to deal with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. You can't be running long range dogs on you know a couple hundred acre properties. So that's, right. I think uh, we've talked about that. You yeah. know, the shorter range dogs with a little bit more grit to them on the on the smaller properties are. Ideal. Yeah. You can't have a long range dog on a 400 acre plot. They just get out, <laughs> get out of reach. You, I think you, once you blink once, they're gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, that, that has a big, uh, has a lot to do with it. I think when you're raising dogs too, and what you want to keep in the cattle, yeah. the, the properties you hunt, you know, so, um, but that's it. I mean, like you can see when Cabela gets up here, you can just see the natural bobtail here. This is a defining feature of them. Yeah. You like a bobtail dog, don't yeah, you? I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the the word cur means to growl or grumble in Old Norse, but they this is the cur tail. It's kind of like their defining feature. Some of them have a you know smaller tail than this. This is more of a half a tail. But you can see she's a she's she lives a retired life, so she's uh, she's not really missing any meals. But this dog's put her uh, life on the line for me many times, and uh, I think I feel like I owe it back to her to uh, you know let her live her days out in, in peace. You know. So. All right. Uh, so this next topic that i really like to to talk about is is just in general the, is hog hunting yeah okay so these cur dogs and the bulldogs and all that we we use them for for hog hunting and and you know working cows not more so the bulldogs because they're, they're real catchy and, you, know, <laughs> yeah. we, you can't have that but the cur dogs are working dogs they are hog hunting dogs and cow dogs now uh we use our dogs for hog hunting right. our dogs do come from cow line cow lines uh, but we use them for hog hunting. Uh, hog hunting, people don't even understand really what, what hog hunting is. You know, the feral hog, feral, you know, feral pig, whatever you want to call it, has overtaken the United States. Yeah. Um, they do over a billion dollars of damage, a billion dollars of damage a uh, year. And it's, it's insane. Uh, a female pig, a sow, can reproduce twice a year. Their gesta in their gest uh, well, their gestation period is uh, three months, three weeks, three days. So just under four months. So we'll say they have, um, they, they have two litters a year, 12 lit, uh, piglets in each litter, say six survive each litter. That's 12 hogs from one hog in one year. And there's over, a, what do you say? What do you think the population is in the state? Millions. Yeah, millions. And, and th this is just including Florida. You know, the, the hog population started in Florida. The Spanish brought them here and they they reproduced and they they just spread so this is why we do this this is why we raise our dogs to, to hog hunt um everybody hunts differently okay it's there's not one right way there's not one wrong way um we hunt with our dogs you know you guys tree stand they the hunt they blind hunt they uh they trap stuff like that i don't have the patience to the trap night vision yeah the, the night vision scope you can go into texas and do some crazy stuff with some helicopters you know but to Pete and I, as, as dog men, we love using our dogs. We love taking a puppy from this big and raising it to the size of these dogs and watching them excel. It's, it's, it's a great feeling, it's an, and it, it, that's why we do it. Um, but we use our dogs. Now, there's many different styles of hog hunting as well. You got buggy hunting, right? uh, you know, swamp buggy or side by side. You got walk hunting, which I've done a lot of my life, <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, you know, I still do, yeah. you know, um, truck hunting, um, stuff like that. You know, there, there's so many different styles. Now, now, what we talked about earlier is terrain. If you're hunting a short, uh, or I say a smaller property with some shorter range dogs, you're going to do a lot more walk hunting, correct? Yeah. So you might be able to truck hunt it and stuff like that. But you get out there into like the bigger ranches, you know, the 10,000 acre ranches, 1,000 acre ranches, 30,000 acre ranches, you need some, you need a swamp buggy or a big truck. No if and buts about Side you, by side. Side by side, you know, four wheelers, yes. I mean, you've hunted some big properties back in the day, man, and wall cutting those big properties is miserable. Yeah, it is. Especially when the dogs pull out 800, 900 a mile, and you gotta go close that gap. Yeah. 
What's uh, I saw a meme on social media one time where it's like, I'm here, dogs here over a mountain in their tree. You know that yeah. that's in, in, in all reality. That's how it, what it feels like. Yeah. And people don't understand the um, the stuff that these hogs live in. You know, if they you know you got thick palmettos, thick turkey neck uh, palmettos. Uh, you know, swamps. You know, big old pepper tree heads that look like a tumbleweed. And yeah. wherever the hog goes, the dog goes, and wherever the dog goes, you go. So like that but um so there's different styles of hunting different styles of dogs so if you hunt a smaller property like we said you need a smaller or shorter range dog uh you hunt them um the bigger properties you need a longer range dog you you, you can't have something that just hunts out a couple hundred yards you need a dog that goes and finds it uh the, the sugar cane yeah perfect example that is some thick stuff yeah man. um you That's know we head out there with uh my buddy uh henry mason of harlem outfitters and uh he's been hunting that stuff for years man and He's got some dogs that go, and dogs that can hunt through that stuff, man. That sugar cane can get what, twelve feet tall? Yeah, tall. maybe, maybe more. Yeah. And and it's as thick as it, I, I compare it to bamboo and uh, corn. Yeah. You know, it grows like corn, but crosses like bamboo. You know, and it's it's miserable. So you got to have some dogs that go. Um, and it, it really, like I said, different styles of of, of dogs. You know, like I said, the, the grittiness of the dog. You want something that can stop stop a hog. You know. You know, you don't want a, uh, a smaller uh, property. You don't want that hog running too far. Right. You want a dog that stops it. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I know we've talked about it. I, 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 like I said, I've always liked a medium, longer range dog. It, sometimes it's tough going, you know, waiting on a dog all night, you know, going miles, man. But again, like I said, where that hog goes, the dog goes, and where the dog goes, you go. Yeah, exactly. Um, what, what, what's your opinion on some of that, like with the hog hunting and stuff, like? Uh, I guess almost the same thing with the styles of dogs. You know, and I can only go with what I've experienced, in my opinion, and you know the, the buddies that I that I hunt with. Yeah, because you go you hunt in North Florida a lot. Yeah, like more of the central. Oh yeah, central. central that's right. Yeah, yeah. Of the state. And um, you know, to me, in my in, in my opinion, uh, I've noticed that the dogs have almost lost their hunt. Yeah. The dogs that I've got in and tried out and used, um, they kind of just run behind the buggy or they kind of just, once they hear a bay, they'll go to it. Yeah. And um, I think that's another reason why a lot of people really just kind of keep their stuff and just keep it to themselves. Keep it to know? themselves. Yeah. And, or or they let you, their buddies You, you do an outcross where this guy's like, oh, this dog hunts like this. And then you put him on the ground and he's following you behind the buggy. You're right. like, I guess I'm never going outside the box again. Yeah. You know? So... One thing that I also want to point out is I think people think that we make these dogs hunt. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, when they're kind of slacking off, we kind of push them a little bit. But the drive in these dogs, some of these like really good uh, genetically bred dogs are, are it's insane. Yeah. I mean, they, they want to go, you should see my dogs when, and I know yours do the same thing when, when, uh, when, when we leave and we don't take all of them. Right. What do they do? They freak yeah. out, don't they? Yeah, they do. yeah, yeah. See, he's ready to go catch a hog right now, <laughs> ain't he? I think mine's ready to shut her down, you know? <laughs> But we do everything we can for our dogs. Um, you know, it's a rough life for them, but they they love it. You know, you you're going against a a, a two thousand pound bull, you know, or a mad mama cow, or a big old you know ranked boar hog, man. Yeah. They have to have that heart, man. Yeah. So this is where I want to talk about what we use on our dogs. Right. Uh, this here is a a cut vest. Um, in my opinion, the best cut vest on the market uh this is southern cross cut gear this is owned by my, my buddy dave williams uh the thing i admire about dave is that he he makes his stuff but he is so open to new designs you've seen the vest throughout the years yeah. you know what i mean um like when i first started there wasn't these uh, sh uh shoulder flaps you know there wasn't these um cut collars connected to the vest yeah but you can see some of the marks, you know, that, that if this dog did not have this on, uh, I'm hanging out at the vet's office, you know what I mean? Or I'm trying to, you know, help her out myself. So this stuff here is top notch. You know, you can visit them, you know, check out their website and he's always got stuff going on. Um, but this is how we uh, track our dogs. This is uh, one of the newer styles of Garmin. It's called an Alpha 100. You have the Alpha 200? The 200 yeah. eye, yeah. Toby's over there digging digging for a hog. Look at him. <laughs> I don't blame him. It's hot. But this is how we track our dogs. 
Um, and these are the collars. So these are the Garmin collars, okay? Um, these can tell us where our dogs are at all times. They update our, they, they make new collars all the time. Uh, but these link to this GPS and I can link up to how many? About 10? It's quite a few. I don't know. I don't know what that model is, but I, I think these are the T fives. Yeah. But you have the TT fifteens that um, can shock them. You know what I'm saying? If you need to get them back and stuff like that. But I think you can do about 10, 10 at a time. I think, especially those guys that run the hounds. Yeah. I think they drop like thirty hound dogs on the <laughs> ground at a time. You know, so um, that's just how it goes. But uh, I just want people to know that you know a lot of guys we we do our best to protect these dogs with, with the gear that we have. Now that comes into a lot of the old timers that never used to use this stuff. Right. Um, they didn't know what tracking collars were. They didn't imagine hog hunting without tracking collars back in the day. Yeah. So a lot of those old timers back in the day, they, they never used tracking gear, man. Right. They didn't use cut collars. They didn't know cut vests. They didn't know what it is. So could you imagine nowadays hog hunting on, on um, properties and not knowing boundary lines? And because there's programs you can download to that. I think it's called bird's eye. Uh, right. something of, of that nature where you can download it and you can see the terrain they didn't have that no. you know so we're kind of spoiled as a, as a newer generation of hogland yeah. but that's why i admire you so much is because you were raised learning from the old guys but you're also new and in tune with, right. the, with the newer stuff yeah yeah but these guys that the old timers they just drop them dogs and listen for the bark yeah you know that's where it comes into silent dogs and open dogs yeah you got an open dog you know where he is at all, all the times Silent dog, you don't know where he's at unless you're tracking him. Yeah. So it's tough. Yeah. But anyways, that's uh, that's what we're doing. We're, we're doing our best to protect these dogs and keep tracks on, uh, you know, keep tabs on them in the woods. And it, it's really cool to watch them take a track. You can see it on the GPS. Oh, yeah. and, you know, it's they just kind of yeah, yeah. you 100, 700 a mile. You know, but you just watch them work those tracks, man. Work that scent and just. It, you know you can just follow it on the gps and it's really cool really cool to watch so, so uh next topic that i uh really really kind of wanted to talk about man and um this is where i really admire you when it comes to this uh when it comes to these dogs and stuff is uh people don't i think people uh miss out on like the genetics aspect of dogs yeah uh you and i have really di dove deep into kind of talking about them old school florida cur dogs right um i know that's what you you know you've always you know, when it comes to cur dogs, I think you're a big Florida cur guy. Yeah. And but people don't understand, you know, what it takes to make a dog and what it, you know the science behind it, the genetics. Right. Uh, the Florida cur really, it's a what is it a? I think you said a hound and an old timey bulldog crossed or. Yeah, I mean typically, and you know, I've spoken with Rusty Parker in Arcadia, Philip Flint, some of the old timers, and I always ask them what, how they got their own cur dog line, and typically, they would use whatever bulldog they had on hand and whatever hound they had. And so I had uh, Reba, one of my curs that I got from my buddy Carlos. Well, what, what, is, what was Reba again? Reba's a... So Reba, she's, a, she's a cur, she's out of some cow dog line, but my buddy's been using them and breeding them for hogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, thought, uh, I, I remember, I, I know what she looks like, I just couldn't remember what she was crossed up with. Yeah, so I sent off her DNA and I sent off my uh, bobtail dog, uh, Brutus. Okay. His oh, Br oh, Brutus. Yeah. yeah. And, um, she came back with about 40 to 43% bulldog. Yeah. About 25% um, uh, was some, it was plot, red bone, and black and tan hound. I think they crossed a lot of the red bones. Yeah. I, mean, I think that was one of their major crosses to the bulldog was yeah. the red bone, wasn't it? Yeah. And so, and then there was a little bit of catabolic <coughs> in there. Yeah. And then with Brutus, he had more bulldog in him with about 15%, um, it was like red bone. Yeah. What, uh, some, as I've, you know, grown and, and seen, you know, these dogs and stuff like that and talked to a lot of the old timey uh, guys, you know, like my buddy, Edwin Cooper, uh, Mike Cribs, my buddy, Kai, Jimmy, um, you know, my buddy, Brandon, you know, I, I could talk dogs all day with these guys, Yeah. but they, I, I just feel like the dogs that they hunted back then, you know, when they were really getting into it, were handled a lot. They, they were handling different, they hunted different. They didn't need a whole pack of dogs back then. I think it was the genetics, the dogs were just bred better, like you were saying. Yeah. And this gets into like the next topic really, or not really next topic, but the next uh, bullet on that is, uh, I think people are crossing dogs that don't need to be crossed. Right. I mean, you get a dog that, you know, 
doesn't really have a lot of drive or has some bad features when it comes to you know frame or you know stuff like that stature and then you cross that into a you know another dog eventually down the line that's going to reappear right and now you got a dog that has, is prone to health issues right or you know what when we when we hunt these dogs we look for qualities drive uh, heart bottom you yeah. know grit speed heat tolerance heat tolerance you know these dogs especially them florida curs and old school florida curs and them old cowboys would, you know, all day long work cows on them. Yeah. Them them dogs gotta handle that heat, man. Yeah. And then at night go and hunt hogs with them. That's a working dog, yeah. but you know, um, you are a bulldog man as well. You are a yeah. bulldog man, and that dog right there is one of the best looking bulldogs I've ever seen. <laughs> Where w w the American bulldog? People don't understand when you hear bulldog, they think of an English bulldog, you know, but. Right. Can you can you just tell us a little bit about the American Bulldog? I mean, what your what your desired trait is for them? So th there's really two types. There's the more classic, the bully type, which is more the Johnson, the bigger, yeah. the bigger 90 pound, 100, 110 pound. Yeah, those, those suckers are big. Yeah. Um, and then you have the standard dog, which he is. They <laughs> typically will have a, like a longer muzzle that he's got, almost like a three inch muzzle. It might be a little bit shorter, more more typey dog. And um, I think his, I think I don't know who has got a bigger head, me or him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got him on the nose. Though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so these dogs have been around for an extremely long time. Um, yeah. Alan Scott and uh, John D. Johnson were the ones that got these dogs registered, and I believe it was 1963. No, I'm sorry, 1973. And um, when they did that. What they did is they tested as many bulldogs as they could yeah. um, on I like rain, rain cows and, and you know wild pigs and stuff like that, and uh, they just started breeding back and forth. And Alan Scott eventually went away from John D. Johnson and wanted a smaller typey dog, like like Toby, for instance. Yeah, because uh, my dogo BB, yeah, man, so walking them big old dogs through the woods, especially the Florida woods, is miserable, man. Yeah, and he's he like you said, he's smaller framed, and I bet you he's not as bad. Right. If they handle well, not bad, but I mean, yeah, yeah. But that's that's where we get into the crosses, man. And and like well, we talked about the you know people crossing Catahoulas. Oh, what a beautiful dog! Well, I want spots in my dog. That's great. Catahoulas are beautiful, but why are people are breeding them for colors? Looks, yeah. That is a working dog. That is a state dog of Louisiana, man. Yeah. They were bred in the swamps to hunt hogs and work cows. Yeah. And now you're breeding them for just color. That's insane to me. So. As dog man, it's it's sad to see that, and you you know that's why I love talking to these old timey guys, man, and a lot of my old school friends, and just learning what you know. You, if you cross this to this, you you you'll get this, you know, or stuff like that. So, and then when it comes to the black mouth curs, man, I'm I'm a I'm a yellow dog man, right. you know, yeah. you know, you you you've always told me that, and uh, I've dug deep in uh, their breeds. Or the breed you know and who developed it and stuff like that and there was a big name um mr randy wright there's a dog you got kind of two lines of the um the the black mouth curves now i'm not an expert by any means but uh you got the ladner line and you got the weatherford's Ben. you know the weatherford Ben. he was a dog that mr randy wright had and he crossed that dog a handful of times a lot yeah i think it was like 40 times maybe a little I don't, i'm not sure the exact number but they specifically bred for certain traits. You know, I think that Weatherford's Van dog was a, a gritty cow dog and a, and a hog dog. I'm not. Well, he was a he was a cow dog cull because he was too catchy. Yeah, and, and then, then he was straight catch on, on hogs. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he was one of the rankest catch dogs. Out. I mean, that's just some of the stuff I've read up on. And yeah. um, the Weatherford Ben is more what you see a lot of more Weatherford Bens, but the Ladner line is uh, that's a really good line as well. I think they're more for. Uh, on their smaller, smaller yeah game. and i know some guys that hunt them on hogs too so but they're, they're all good man and it like i said it all comes down to genetics really so so uh, kind of a closing topic that i really wanted to talk about with pete um a lot of these topics that i'm going to be bringing into the channel are kind of what i want to talk about with different people but the this topic here is, is huge and anybody that hog hunts with dogs can kind of uh contest with this and uh, have their own opinion on it but uh there's a lot of changes that have happened throughout the years um, that, that we've noticed and that are still happening um, that kind of sucks for us. Uh, one of the biggest ones is, um, and I kind of talked about it with my buddy John in my raw interview that I had on, that I did with him. Uh, and Pete, like I said, can contest to this, but uh, land changes. 
yeah, the development, the development in Florida is, is, is unreal. And just in general, in the Southern United States, people, you know, the Carolinas, Georgia, stuff like that, they're developing, but Florida is developing at an exceptionally high rate. Uh, there's so many properties that I've used to hunt that are developed and as well for you too. Yeah. I mean, I remember we talked about it. You said you used to hunt, how many properties were you with? A handful. Three. It was three and they all got, they all have uh, developments on them now. Yeah, and it, and it sucks because generations, like kids that used to hunt with their grandfathers and their fathers and great grandfathers, say you hunted that thousand acres down the road that you had permission to hunt on and that gets developed. It, it, it kind of, it's sad. Yeah. Or you, you knew a rancher the the ran the cattle rancher that had a uh, you know has had a uh, hundred head of cattle out there for for years and he's an old timer and it's been in, that ranch has been in the family for years and then all of a sudden he's got to sell because he can't afford it anymore right so as dog hunters it, it sucks because like I said our our world is kind of dwindling every day yeah. with the amount of land that um, uh, gets sold and developed and that, that 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 takes a toll on us man and, and it sucks because without land you can't make these dogs right. You know, you can make them in your yard and you get into bay pens, you know, you can make them in bay pens, but uh, there's a big difference between a bay pen dog and a woods dog. Yeah. So, but I think that has a lot to do with um, why people aren't, um, or, you know, the, the loss of land has a lot to do with uh, putting a damper on uh, the way that we live. I mean, that's one of the big factors because, like I said, without land, you can't hunt. Yeah. Um, another thing is, is you know, the, the, uh, I think the, the the quality of dogs. What do you? I mean, these hogs are running so much. I mean, I, I feel like that the hogs have have adapted throughout the years. I mean, think about every hog that your dog chases and doesn't stop that gets away. Now, naturally, he's going to pass that on, correct? Yeah. He's going to pass that ability on to flee right. to the next generation. But I mean, we've also talked about it. You think the quality of dogs has kind of uh, gone down? And that's just where it kind of ties back into the genetic conversation. Yeah, because people aren't breeding what's been tested. Yeah. They're breeding based on, let's say if the dog is registered or paperwork, they're going back five, six, seven generations. You, you got to breed basically on the dogs that you have. Yeah. And if they're proven and tested, you can't go back and talk about dogs that's oh, that, 10 generations yeah, back. Yeah, that great, 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 great grandfather was a jam up dog. Well, what do we got now? Yeah. And I think you're right. I think the, the quality of dogs has kind of gone down. People have bred dogs that shouldn't have been bred um, because they just don't, you know, produce. Yeah. And I'm not saying I have the best dogs in the state of Florida or the, or the country, same with you, you know, yeah. but we know what we have, we know what we're capable of. I've had some accidental breedings, but um, I, I have made one breeding that I uh, that I felt worked. I've got a lot of positive reviews on it. That Diesel Bonnie Cross, yeah. I think was a good, you know, because you, you stack some of that, uh, that blood, that uh, Reno blood. Yeah, you know some of that uh, old timey uh, yellow dog stuff, and but I, I in general I think that uh, like you said the quality of dogs is kind of diminished. You know you can't you don't have a lot of dogs that can stay hooked up. I think a lot of dogs don't really have a lot of heart anymore. Yeah, um, but yeah, just I think uh, in the the adaptation of that ho the, the hogs. I mean people don't realize these animals are smart, man. Yeah, I mean I always compare them to like Albert Einstein for you know smarts. Yeah. Uh, they can run like you say in bull yeah. and they can swim like Michael Phelps. Yeah. And they're as strong as a, as a bodybuilder. Yeah. I mean, people underestimate this animal. Even a, even a hundred pound sow can do some damage. Yeah, man. absolutely. I mean, no joke. They got teeth. You know, they, you see some boar hogs with three inches of teeth. Yeah. Imagine getting cut by that. Yeah. You get cut in that leg, you're done. Yeah. So you got to have some dogs that can put up a fight with that big sucker. Right. Same thing with a big old, see, you got a big old 2,500 pound brown bull. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so for sure um but i i think that's what uh, like i said a lot of the changes that are happening in our world have uh, hindered us a lot but you know we're gonna just still keep going man yeah. we're, we're still gonna try to make dogs and um this is kind of how it is all right so this is kind of like the final moments of this interview man um i i have really enjoyed talking with you pete this is why i uh, have started the Curdog dog chronicles like we've talked about before man um to bring light of why we're doing this, why the, the, the style of uh, life we live, man. Um, you know, like I said, bringing, bringing uh, examples of people's lives of, that live this kind of life to, to fruition, you know, people that do 4-H, you know, people that raise cattle, people that work horses, this is the whole idea. So uh, that's why I wanted to really bring you in, man, and, and I really appreciate you sitting down with me. But uh, before we, uh, we close out, man, just, uh, I know you've, uh, you have your YouTube channel, 
Uh, we didn't really discuss it too much in the beginning, but uh, give me some uh, uh, some details of what you're playing with the YouTube channel and uh, with your dogs, man. Uh, it was kind of just for uh, kind of giggles that I came out with the channel. I was hunting with my buddy Carlos and uh, JD, and uh, I saw that no one was really using uh, the white bulldogs. So, you know, Toby's been working for me really well. Um, and so when I came out with the channel, it was me just basically showing what these dogs were used for historically. And that was for on hogs or farm work, um, kind of garden, you know, the, you know, the, the homestead per se, and then catching, you know, rough wild cattle. Oh, yeah. You know, we don't do none of that. I, yeah, I just that's, yeah, 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 um, for sure. And that's basically what the channel is about, showing, you know, the white standard bulldogs working and the yeah. Florida cur work. Yeah. I mean, you're doing a great job, but I think you said you had some uh, plans for some breedings. Yeah, I have a female that I got from Bob Lashaw, which is out of Kinghaven Kennels. And he still tests his dogs. Um, that's what a lot of his bloodline goes back to, which is the old hind blood. And uh, her name's Chico. You can check her out on the channel. She's on there with a short film. Oh, yeah, Chico. I like her. Yeah. yeah. So uh, she's showing great signs. Uh, she's about six months old. So we'll see if she makes a cut, if that's the goal. Uh, I'll be breeding her with Toby and uh, hopefully we get some more white, yeah, white yeah. bulldogs on the ground. Um, I know you have the bulldogs. What about the cur dog aspect? Are you going to bring any 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 cur dog breedings in or are you just going to kind of see how that, that plays out? Well, I still have my female Reba. Okay. Um, my buddy Carlos, he did a breeding with Reba's dad, which is Yella. Okay. And that was a, a, a father to daughter breeding. So um, I got a female pup off and her name is Peanut. Oh yeah, yeah. And, um, you know if it's yellow, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that. Carlos has a pretty good program. Uh, that's why I like hunting with him. We yeah. kind of like. Uh, I've seen you guys catch some good hogs, man. And yeah, you guys were all work good together. Yeah, awesome, man. Um, I just want you guys to, uh, you know, kind of uh, reach out to Pete. You know, like his YouTube channel and stuff like that. And and if you guys are ever interested in a really good working bulldog, I mean, you guys can see Toby's. Uh, temperament here is this demeanor great handle on them and uh pete is a true dog man that's why i admire pete and respect him so just definitely keep an eye out for some of the stuff that he's going to bring to the table um but other than that you know it's been a great interview and uh till next time cur dog chronicles out <laughs>